you doing? Having dinner? No shame, you're not to blame video for a while. It's been seven months without a drink. Seven months this this month, which is my 2020. Determined then to do a year, which I'll do. Feel so much better without drink. You know, sort of how it can make you depressed, anxious, paranoid. But then just not the person you really should be. You know, like I've said before, it's uh, drink's fine if you control the drink, but once again, when it controls you, that's, that's not so good. And you need to recognize and maybe just cut it down if you can't stop. You don't want to stop, just cut it down. Today, I want to talk about the book because the book's getting, getting there, really. It's thanks to a friend called Richard, an amazing man who's helping me put the book together. But it's uh, what to call the book, I'm thinking maybe the wink, reason behind the wink, because obviously it uh, boils down to my childhood, the abuse, the beatings, mental health issues of my mum, dealing with that. But, and a dad knowing that his friend was a paedophile, being told he'd already abused one of my siblings when he was eight. And uh, basically, I'll tell you what happened from the start so maybe you can get an understanding. So, Keith has got my brother on his shoulders out at sea. He got a caravan, family caravan. He didn't have a family cell for kids, but that was uh, a way of grooming families, underprivileged families, and he'd allow them to go to the caravan for free as long as they could come along, access to kids. Be clever, really, sly but clever. So, he's got my brother out to sea, brother comes out to sea, well, the age of eight years old, and that's my mum, what's mum, what's an order? Mum's gone, what, what, what do you mean? Why have you heard that? This case just been filling me underneath, and he said he's got an order. Remember, I was being took off the beach. Arguments, and then Keith disappeared for a while. So about, about a year, and uh, my dad used to take, us, take him with us, with him even on a weekend. And about a year later, my dad drives into Rushall, into the cul-de-sac where Keith lived. And even then, I was about nine, thinking, hang on, he abused my brother, he did something bad to my brother. And then Keith got picked up and then that's when Keith got out to me. And I think he saw me more vulnerable because I was, I was a weak kid, I was anemic, I was thin, no strength, went off my legs for a while. My dad just described me as, as the brunt, I was the brunt. I'm not a runt. Never was, never will be a runt. Cheers for that. But obviously then Keith got out to, to me then. Keith had got ferrets because he used to go rabbit in and I ate blood sports. I don't like it at all. What I saw as a kid put me off my life. If you want to do it, that's up to you. But I don't like you. So uh, Keith had obviously got out to me and Keith had asked me to go and feed the ferrets. I never used to want to go because I never felt safe. But my dad used to make me. Used to call me, stop being stupid little shit, stop being a stupid little whatever. So I'd have to go with Keith. And that's when Keith would make me do things. And then Keith would be, don't tell your dad what we've done. Or I'll tell your dad what you've done. Or I've done. <laughs> I was nine years old, mate. How was it me? So last weekend I used to dread going to Keith. I knew it was coming. And over time it'd become numb. I got numb to it because I knew it was coming. I remember my dad had gone shooting and my dad had took um, my brother and left me with Keith and I'd beg my dad not to leave him with Keith. <coughs> Excuse me. And I said, you know, I don't want to be, I don't want to stop with Keith. I want to come with you. And again, stop being a stupid little baby. Stay with Keith. 
and I was on my own with Keith. And of course, guess what happens? I got molested again. The reason we're going to call the, the book The Wink is again back at Keith's house wanting me to uh, go to um, feed the ferrets with him, which I didn't want to do, where I got forced to. Gone into uh, where I kept the ferrets in this shed back of the house and I got molested. He made me do things a nine year old boy should never do. And again, don't tell your dad what we've done or uh, I'll tell your dad what you've done. And um, I remember going back into the living room where my dad was and my brother and uh, sitting there, numb, as you can imagine. Keith looked at me, looked over at me and he winked. He winked at me like it was consensual, like it was a couple. Like, you, you know, it was, you both enjoyed what you've just done. And I'll never forget that wink. I'll never forget him looking at me and winking at me and a smirk. Not nice. I've been having therapy from a fantastic psychotherapist and he's inspired me to body become a psychotherapist. And I almost imagine myself out of my body and looking at little Steve. Me as an adult looking at little Steve. And I actually realised for the first time what little Steve had gone through. Sexual abuse, beatings, mum's mental health. And he got me, he did get me and I started to cry and I felt sorry for little Steve. But then I thought, wow, little Steve, how brave you were. What a strong little lad you was to go to all that and to still be groping to an adult and not to do too many bad things. Stop drinking and now get your life in order. I want to help other people and want to become that therapist, that amazing therapist that I will and I'm determined to be and help so many people. Got me thinking maybe an idea. It's because my childhood was taken really. And I think I've mentioned in other videos, you know, where you've uh, where a child's blank canvas and you have an opportunity with parents to create something beautiful with that blank canvas. So maybe to get, you know, cardboard cuts out of a little boy, little girl, and then get people who've been abused or had trauma, childhood trauma, to rewrite their childhood, to repaint, you know, put what should have been there, love, compassion, safety, put it all there on that child. And look forward to it rather than dread going to see a therapist, look forward to your next session where you're gonna put right what they did wrong. So yeah, this is just a, a quick update really. In a good place. You know, and guess guess what Keith? I am telling. He said, don't get telling. But now mate, I'm telling. And anybody else who's faced the same trauma, tell. It's not a dirty secret anymore. Tell, you'll feel so much better. I guarantee you will. So, yeah, the book's coming along. Looking forward to getting that book done. So hopefully it's going to be a, a book that's going to help so many people. So, no shame. You're not to blame. You take care.